Hey guys, my name is Obelisk and I'm back again with another installment to my Day Out Class Overview video series. Today we're going to talk about infiltrators. Um, we're going to talk about um, their, their style lines, um, some of their, their spell lines like Invenom and Stealth, um, RAs, um, spec choices, um, template things like templates, general strategies, um, pretty much just an entire overview of the class. Um, so let's go ahead and hop into game. I'm on my infiltrator here. Uh, let's see. I'm about rank seven. Haven't played the guy in quite a while. Um, but I have played, um, I, I played SB since the, the big stealth changes. So I know a bit about the, the new poisons and the stealth mechanics. Haven't played the new crit strike a lot because that changes, it seems, every week. It'd be nice if we get a patch every week. Um, actually, it's probably wrong. Patches every week would be terrible with the way things have been going. Anyway, um, it'd be nice to get a new update soon, though. Um, Sorry, I kind of kind of rambling there, but um, yeah, kind of um, the new crit strike line is kind of new to me, but it's pretty simple, um, so I should be able to explain it pretty well. Played a little bit on it. First, let's look at we'll look at their their uh, melee lines first, their melee combat lines, and we'll start with crit strike because that's unique to assassins. Um, first, let's see. We'll start at the beginning. We won't talk about these first four styles because they're pretty much useless um, because they get outdated uh, very quickly by things like backstab two pretty much eliminates this whole entire line so we'll start with pincer what pincer is is a side style it's a high damage side style medium in cost and it's a four second stun so really good stuff there um, just a standard old side stun with high damage um, so you're going to want to be using that quite a bit because it's a good damage style now, we'll look at the follow-up to this. We'll go ahead and skip ahead a little bit um, just so we can stay on one train of thought. Uh, Achilles Heel. This is the follow-up to Pinsir. Um, oh, I'm totally wrong. Ripper, sorry, Leaper is a follow-up to Pinsir. Um, and what Leaper is is a 3% armor debuff for 30 seconds. So we'll hit him with a Pinsir, and then we'll hit him with a Leaper. So we get a side stun followed up by an armor debuff. And that little effect there is the armor debuff. We'll do it to this guy too, a pincer, and then a leaper. All right, next we have backstab two. And what backstab two is, is a out of stealth opening, um, devastating damage, as you can see here. Let me open up this. And it's a three second stun. Must be stealth to use it and must hit their back. Um, the thing about backstabs, it has a follow up called thigh cut. It's a very high damage and it applies a bleed. Um, so that's good. So we'll show you this. Backstab and then thigh cut, and that's that. Uh, what backstab does unique about that is it goes through blade turns, goes through brutal guards, things like that. Pretty much unmissable if you're at their back. Um, it's, it's a good out of stealth opening. Um, the other out of stealth opening is we're, we're going to jump ahead a little bit too to stay on this train of thought is perforate artery, and this is something people probably know a lot about. It's kind of the uh, the iconic infiltrator style, I would think. It's a devastatingly high damage again. Um, and, and just for reference, we'll look at the, uh, we, we used backstab on the level one dummy. And so we're gonna get our cap with our current buff situation, which are crappy realm buffs, but it's close enough anyway. So our backstab cap for our main hand is 816. So that's pretty decent, um, pretty decent cap damage. What we're gonna do now is look at perfect artery which is a devastating high frontal out of stealth opening, must be stealth. The uh, follow-up style to this is Creeping Death. Creeping Death is a uh, high damage style and also applies a seven second stun, so very strong. And then our next style is Rip, Separ yeah, rip Separation, which is a 3% armor factory debuff, very high damage. So this is a three part frontal out of stealth chain. So we'll look at that. So there's Perforate Artery. We have Creeping Death with the stun. And then we have rips up with the armor debuff. So let's look at our damage caps here, just to compare. So backstab, as we as we looked at earlier, was 814 cap. And then we had thigh cut at 839 cap. And these are relative to my infiltrator, but you'll see how, how they scale. And these are just main hand caps too. I'm not gonna vector in the offhand caps because we might not do it every time. So our PA cap is 1126. So roughly, you know what? To, uh, 300 more than backstab so that's good then our creeping death is 447 which is a bit higher than thigh cut not much higher but a bit higher 
the big one though is well actually not the big one but rips up is um 482 so that's you know a pretty good pretty good swing there um so yeah this is a, a pretty dang devastating uh, chain to land as far as your damage caps go so we got our big out of stealth openings in backstab and perforate artery both are not affected by brill guards or blade turn so that's good to, that's good to know you'll go right through brill guards and all that good stuff so don't worry about hitting people with brill guards the next style chain we'll look at is hamstring this is another pretty iconic um, style for infiltrators i'm not going to be able to show you the the properly land style because i can't evade these guys but you can see how it looks it's oops it's this style where he does like the little flip thingy or spin thingy um i don't know when i think of infiltrators i think of perforate artery and i think of hamstring the whole hamstring chain the hamstring chain has changed drastically over the years but we'll look at it anyway so hamstring um the style itself is a 21 percent attack speed debuff for 20 seconds high damage great after evade style the follow-up to hamstring is achilles heel there we go and that uh, that gives you a um 2% less effective armor buff for 30 seconds. Um, so pretty good, and it's very high damage, so it's a very high hitting chain. Your first style is high damage and hamstring, and your second style is very high damage and Achilles heal and applies armor debuff. Now, if you go 50 critical strike, which I'm not, you get a uh, style called Ripper, which is the third part in the chain. It goes hamstring, uh, Achilles heal, then Ripper. It's a very high damage as well style and it also applies a huge 5% armor debuff for 30 seconds. So you get overall, what, 7% um, armor debuff with um, Achilles heel and Ripper in that chain. It can be quite hard though to land all three styles though because the way people run through and uh, defense rates and things like that. So it's a, it's a lot to go for, especially putting the points to get 50 um, critical strike, kind of hard to do. Anyway, next style we have is Garot, which is your standard anytime style. And this style used to snare. It now does nothing except for medium damage with a little bit of its defense penalty. The cool thing about this style is if you go 45 critical strike, we get this style called Death's Door. And it's a follow-up to Garot. It's a very high damage style and a 2% armor debuff for 30 seconds. So that's a great anytime chain to use. You get a medium anytime, which is standard amongst any times, and then you get a very high follow-up to it with a pretty good armor debuff, a 2% armor debuff. So this is a pretty hard-hitting chain. Um, so this is why I like going 45 critical strike. It kind of, It's something unique um, to infiltrators, nightshades, and shadow blades. Um, next, we will look at... Um, I think we got pretty much everything here except for Stunning Stab. So what Stunning Stab does now is it's just a straight up back style. Um, it's a low damage style, so don't use this you know, if you're trying to get a ton of damage. But what this does is it stuns for six seconds. So what you wanna do is maybe hit him with that, and then go to the side, and then with a pincer, and then a leaper, or hit him with a back stun, and then hit him with a garrote, hit him with a death's door. Um, pretty good stuff. And just looking at caps real quick. So Death's Door, this cap is four, um, 439, whereas Leaper is 476. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to land your side chain more because it's higher damage. But that's a pretty dang good anytime chain. Um, it's not quite as good as your side chain, um, seeing that Pincer is high damage and Groat, the first style and the anytime chain is medium damage. but it's a pretty decent um, anytime chain. But yeah, if you get someone stunned, probably the best bet is to go for your Leaper chain because you got 416 as your um, your main hand cap damage and then 476 as your uh, Leaper um, uh, cap damage. Whereas Garot is 478 and 439. So that does it for the crit strike line. We'll quickly go into the dual wield line uh, most of these dual wield styles here that we have are great. Shadow's Edge is probably the only one I'd mention because it's a back style with an attack speed debuff. 16% attack speed debuff is okay. And it's a rear style, medium damage, nothing really crazy there. Um, if you do go higher dual wield than I do, which is a, vi a very viable spec, 
we'll just look at all the styles. You'll get things like Penumbra, which is a high damage back style. So nice damage there from your positionals. You'll get something called Reflection, which is really strong. It's a uh, high damage evade style, but it also um, provides a 50 armor factor debuff for 15 seconds to your target. So it's pretty good damage there. Um, also, f the follow-up style to that, if you go 44 to wield, is Hypnotic Darkness. It's a high damage, um, eight second stun, so pretty brutal stun. Um, so essentially you have your hamstring chain, your hamstring and um, what is it, Achilles heel now, which probably does more damage than this overall, but this does apply that 50 AF debuff. But you gotta remember Achilles heel applies a two armor, two percent um, less effective armor debuff. So they both debuff, but the delves on the uh, the hamstring chain are higher because you get a high um, damage style and then you get a very high damage style, whereas you just get two high damage styles here. But you do get a nice eight second stun here, which is nice. Um, but on the flip side, you get a twenty one percent armor. Or 21% attack speed debuff with hamstring. So trade offs there. Um, your anytime style might be shadows, sorry, might be dark tendrils. It's just a medium damage, um, low end cost style with no defense uh, penalty. So cool there. Um, if you go 50 to wield, you get dual shadows, which is a bleed, um, frontal style, high damage. So if you're at the front of someone, you're 50 to wield, just wail on them with um, dual shadows. It's a cool looking style. It brings back memories of Merc and old uh, Merc filtrators, as they called them back in the day. This was a popular spec. And I guess it's probably still a popular spec too, even today. Um, and then we'll look at we'll quickly look at slash and thrust. Um, so you only need um, if you go by the uh, the fifty one composite weapon is cap weapon skill for using other styles like dual or um, crit strike styles. If you're going by that logic, all you need is um, 51 composite slash or thrust. As you can see here, I have 34 spec. I have 11 in my template, 11 plus the slash, and I have six plus the slash for my uh, realm rank. So I have a total of plus 17, this gives me 51. So I have cap weapon skill here. We'll look at the styles I get. Um, I, I'm not really gonna look at much except for cross slash. This is a frontal um, attack speed debuff, 16% for 20 seconds. So that's pretty good. Really easy to get off. Just run up and uh, throw it on your target at the beginning. And then there'll be attack speed debuff and just reapply that later. Um, other things you can look at using are Riposti, which is an after evade style, high damage, pretty good. Um, with a 21% attack speed debuff, very similar to Hamstring. Um, the, the thing about this one though is you get Befuddler, which is a follow-up, which is a high damage six second stun. So if you're not going high to wield and you want to use an evade stun, this is it. This is your bet, best bet. Um, so this is your stun, your hamstring and Achilles heel chain are gonna do more damage. This is gonna give you a stun. Um, other than that, maybe a side slicer is a snare, a melee snare, um, 14 seconds, decent. Um, if you go higher slash, you don't really get much. You get a back style, which does high damage, and you get like an anytime chain with diamond or with a sapphire slash. And yeah, not worth going that high, in my opinion. Um, if you want to go thrust, that's cool. You can do that. You get a side um, attack speed debuff, a 30% side attack speed debuff, which is pretty good, but you're having to go 39 thrust, so that's kind of expensive. You get a very low level. Um, um, dual, or, sorry, evade stun. So you get this rat thing, which is a pretty good style in itself, it seems. And then you follow it up with wolf's tooth, and it's a four second evade stun, two part evade stun. Um, so that's cool, I guess. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think it's really worth looking at the higher things. Um, I guess if you go 50 thrust, you get an eight second evade stun, but I don't think you should do that, in my opinion. I mean, you could, I guess, but it's up to you. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all the uh, the melee styles, melee style lines in a nutshell. Um, now we'll look at stealth. Um, stealth's changed quite a bit since um, since I guess if you if you haven't played in in the last five years or so, um, you still get the basic things like safe fall at various levels. Here you get the last safe fall at level forty eight that allows you to take less damage when you fall from heights. Um, you get things like um, climb walls at 25 stealth that allows you to climb into keeps and some tile towers and things like that. But the new things, and also you get, sorry, let's look at um, 
what is this called? Shadow Strike. You get Shadow Strike at 35. And that allows you, I can't um, show you because I'll have to be using this on the enemy, but it allows you to teleport to a target. You have to stalk them for 10 seconds and they have to remain in a thousand range. And um, yeah, you just sit there and stalk them and then you teleport to them on PAM, which is nice, but it sometimes it can be difficult to use. Um, but yeah, the new stealth stuff you get, we'll look at the stealth spec line. You get something called Shadow Seek, and this is just a passive buff you put up when you log in. And what this does is it gives you 100% run speed when you're in stealth. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. If you have the highest level of this, which is at level 50, so if you go 50 stealth, you get Shadow Run 3, which is 100% movement speed in stealth. So I'm moving exactly the same speed stealth as I am when I'm unstealthed. You also get um, a 45% increased detection to uh, uncover other hidden people, like other uh, assassins and, and uh, rangers and hunters and things like that. And your ability to stealth is increased. So I guess that helps your detection, yourself, your, your ability to hide, I should say, a bit more. Um, so this is really nice. And this is just something you put up. It stays up pretty much forever until you log out or until you zone maybe. Uh, the next ability we get is this overshadow ability, and this is really cool. It's a three-minute reuse timer ability, um, a, a thousand range, and what it does is it stealths the friend. Can't be used on other assassins or archers. Can be used on minstrels though, but it just stealths someone in, on your team. Ha they have to be within a thousand range, and they can move while they're stealthed. Um, for example, let's let's stealth some dude that's about to run. Well, I guess these guys are porting, so. I guess there's no one to stealth that's going to run. We'll, we'll stealth this cleric right here. So I just hit him, hit him with the stealth, and then he disappears. I can still see him because, obviously, I can see stealth is pretty well. But, um, yeah, he disappears. So if a tank train is on someone and you hit him with that, it might make them lose target or it might get them away. If you have people running over to a friend to attack him, you can stealth him. He'll vanish out of thin air. They won't know what the heck's happening. Um, you can sneak someone into a fight because they can move on their stealth although they are moving very slowly generally um, it's just a pretty cool ability three minute reuse timer it's for groups no um does really nothing for solo or even for stealth groups if you're grouping with other scouts and infiltrators because you can't use it on them you can only use it on minstrels as far as other stealthers go now um, we get this heightened awareness and this is for groups if you're grouping the visibles what it does is it gives everyone in your group a little 20 percent stealth lore um, it's good for invisible groups, I guess, if you're grouping the visibles. doesn't have any effect on other scouts or infiltrators or minstrels. Um, now, the, the, the big reason you go 50 stealth other than Shadow Seek is Blur. What Blur does is it allows you to teleport to a target, whether it be an, an enemy or a friend. Within a thousand radius, you can just teleport straight to them. And it's a minute and a half reuse, so it's pretty low reuse. So let's see. So let's say this guy is a ranger and he just zephyred me and now he's trying to shoot me with a bow. What I can do is hit Blair and be around top of him and ready to just destroy him. And from what I understand, it seems like you go to the side most of the time. So maybe you can hit a quick pincer and hit a nice side, start, or side stun there. So that's a really, really good ability. Um, just It's a game changer right there. Um, it's so hard to get away from assassins now because you get space, you root them or whatever, or you stun them and you kite. You snare them, you kite, and they just hit blur on you and they're right back on top of you. Um, so that does it for stealth. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at the Envenom line. And this had a lot of changes too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how the mechanic functions. No longer do you have little poisons in your bag that you drag on your weapons and apply those to your weapons and then have to swap weapons throughout the fight to apply the poisons. Now what happens is you put up essentially an offensive proc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up my life bane. And as you can see, when I hit life bane, most of my poisons go on cooldown. And that cooldown is 7 seconds. So I can't swap poisons for 7 seconds. Now there are a few um, exceptions to this. Uh, I can swap to my mez poison or my snare poison. And we'll get into that more later. But pretty much most of my, my other poisons I, can, I cannot swap to um, until 7 seconds have passed. I can I'll obviously leave one up all the time. And so my first hit... I can you know, apply life bane and immediately swap. But let me show you how this mechanic works. So it puts this offensive buff up, and it's 100% fire rate. So if I hit with my offhand or my main hand, it's going to apply this poison. Now, 
what's different about this compared to the poisons of yesteryear is the fact that once I apply this poison, I can't reapply this poison, whether it be life bane, my weapon skill debuff, my disease or my melee debuff, all those poisons, I cannot reapply those until the effect fades. So for example, I run up, I hit this thing with, with uh, life bane. You can see the life bane proc there. We'll hit him again. It doesn't reapply. Now this thing lasts for about, what, 10 seconds or so. So here you'll see, um, you'll say the, the poison is subdued here in a second. You see, not reapplying. And then once the poison goes away, here we go. I can hit it and it'll reapply. So I can't keep refreshing the life bane to keep it on 100% of the time. I have to you know, keep a mental timer or keep track of my logs for when the, uh, say, life bane fades and I can reapply life bane after that. So what life bane does, it does 82 body damage and also does 50 matter damage. So it applies a double dot to someone. Now the next poison we'll look at is, um, we're gonna skip this one for a second. This is your snare poison, but we'll go to the disease poison. And what the disease poison does is it applies a disease, um, a pretty decent disease, and also applies a 10% melee resistance debuff for 15 seconds. So how you might open a fight, you might have life bane up on ink. So you'll hit him with life bane, and you'll apply life bane, and you'll immediately swap to your disease, and then hit him with a disease. And then you can't swap for another seven seconds after you swapped to your disease. And as you saw, we applied the disease, and now I can't, whoops, having some lag there. I can't reapply that disease until it fades. So we're still still applied, still applied, and the life bane has subdued, poison has run its course. Um, it's still disease though, because um, remember we applied life bane first. And that disease should be faded now. I don't know if it'll give me a, a log cue. No, nope, it didn't, so there we go. So now you can apply disease to multiple targets. So I can't apply it to this, because it already has disease, but this guy doesn't have the disease, so I can apply it to him, no problem. It's just targets with disease already applied to them can't have a, a disease reapplied. Um, so we'll, we'll go to the next poison now, and this is your weapon skill debuff. Also applies a 30 con debuff. At the highest level, it's 28% weapon skill 30 con, so that's pretty good. Um, so what I would do is I might, you know, already have disease active, so I wanna hit that first, and then I'll swap to my different poison, and then that little face right there, that's the uh, the new poison. And this lasts for 30 seconds, so it's a relatively long duration poison. And like I said, I can apply it to multiple people. I just can't reapply it to the same person over and over. And I'd have to wait 30 seconds to reapply. Um, one thing to note, this poison, it says is always 30 seconds, so it's not affected by resist, the duration of it. So it's gonna be 30 seconds no matter what. Um, no matter what, you, if you have duration in your template or not, you can have 25% duration, it's still gonna last 30 seconds. So no use in putting duration and no use worrying about resist, um, reducing the duration. Um, now another good poison we have is this sword breaker. And what this does is it lowers the, uh, the melee effectiveness by 20% of your target, lasts for 20 seconds. Um, and this, this is what it looks like. It's like this little red effect over their head. Really good for um, if you're fighting tanks, you know, if you're fighting savages, zerkers, um, anything that does a ton of melee damage. This plus your weapon skill condi buff is gonna really lower their damage output, um, giving you a lot, of survive, a lot more survivability, um, mod mitigation there. Um, so that's really nice. Really good poison there, to, especially when you stack it with a weapon skill con debuff. Now, I skipped the snare earlier, and that's because it functions a little bit differently than the other poisons. So this, the highest level snare, it lasts for nine seconds, and it's a 60% snare, so a really good snare, that lasts for you know a pretty short amount of time, but it's enough. Um, the reason this snare is so good is one, because you can use it on root immune targets, which you can't other melee snares. So like if I use my slash melee snare side slicer or whatever it's called, I can't use that on a root immune target. It's gonna do nothing. However, this, I can use it on something that just got rooted, just got out of a root, whatever, just purged a root. It's one of the few things that ignores root immunity. Um, also, if you read the bottom part, the snare does not break on damage. Um, and all, unlike the other poisons, it can be reapplied over and over. It doesn't have to wait till the duration ends. It can be applied every single hit. But the big thing is it doesn't break on damage. 
So the cool thing is you can hit a snare on someone. And then if you're in a stealth group, you can have other scouts shooting him. And he, he's still snared. He's not going to be, the snare is not going to be broken. Like other melee snares or even other snare abilities like the reaver snare, or champ snare, those break on damage. Um, and any melee snare like a paladin, you know, back snare, that breaks as soon as they get damaged. This is very similar to pin, if you know what pin is. Reavers, champs, and Valkyries get pin. That's an unbreakable snare that ignores read immunity. So this is super strong. And also, one of the big things about this is it shares a different reuse timer than your other poisons. If you look at my quick bar, this, my snare, is on slot four. So when I swap to life bane, this stays able to use. So let's let's start this fight. And keep an eye on my, my character, my, my, the poisons that I cast, the guy I'm hitting, and my quick bar. So I, I hit life bane. Now I'm going to apply a disease. Now I'm going to apply my poison. So I'm going to hit the snare poison for a few times until another... Okay, now I'm going to apply my weapon skill con debuff. And now I'm going to go right back to my snare poison. And then I'll wait for my poisons to come back up. I'm going to apply sword breaker. Hit him with that. And then go right back to my snare poison. And I'm going to re recycle life bane as soon as it pops up. Life bane. Hit him with life bane. Right back to snare poison. Okay? So the reason you always... Or in my opinion, the reason you want to apply your poison and then swap immediately back to your snare poison is because there's there's no use in sitting here applying life bane over and over because one, you can only apply it once. So now I apply it and I can't reapply it for another 10 seconds. So me sitting here swinging until I can, you know, apply it again or until I have to wait for my disease to come back up. So let's see, let's, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna start with disease hit disease. Now all my poisons are all cooldown, so I can't swap to life bane or my weapon skill buff. So I'm kind of wasting poison swings here. If I swap immediately to my snare, I'm getting a snare poison on that target. And then I'll hit snare poison, snare poison, snare poison until my next poison becomes available to use. So me swinging with my disease poison up does nothing because they're already diseased. I might as well be applying a snare until I can swap back to life bane or, or my weapon skull debuff or something. So it's just being more efficient um, and always applying an effect every hit. And you might say, well, I'm just fighting someone head on. I don't really need them to be snared. Well, snares help when it comes to 1v1s because if they're doing like run through side stuns and stuff like that, that's going to completely hinder that. You should be able to dodge all their like run through side and back stuns pretty easily. And you should probably be able to get some of your own off um, because they'll be moving slowly. They won't be able to back up as well, things like that. Um, also, if you're fighting things that like to kite, it's going to go ahead and they're going to be snared immediately. So as soon as they turn to kite, maybe they get a stun on you or maybe it's a scald and it instant messes you and tries to get some distance. He's going to be snared as soon as he messes you. So he's going to be snared for, you know, nine to a few seconds, depending on when you applied that last snare. So it's going to be really effective there and keeping them close to you. Things like hunters or rangers, if they decide to kite, they're probably already going to be snared if you're constantly swapping in the snare. So it's just a really good thing to do. So make sure you land whatever poison you wanted to land. So I wanted to land life bane. Make sure I land it, then swap. Like if they evade, you know, my first three life bane hits, keep life bane on until you land it and you see the poison applied and then swap back to your snare. And then you know, snare him a few times and then your disease is up, hit your disease, swap back to your snare, hit him a few more times, then swap to your weapon skill buff when it comes up. Boom, hit him with that, wait for it to apply, swap back to your snare, hit him with that. And then we're going to hit him with Sword Breaker when it comes up. Hit him with Sword Breaker. It's up. Back to Snare. Boom. So they're constantly getting snared. Um, it's just a, a really good thing to do. It's a lot of, it requires a lot of reapplication of your poison. So have them in a really good spot on your keyboard to where you can constantly keep cycling them. Um, but it's just a good thing to do, in my opinion. Now, another poison we didn't talk about because it's not there, it's in abilities, is this um, Tranquilizing Miasma. I assume that's how you pronounce it. That's your mez poison. Now, mez poison, just like um, your snare poison, shares its own cooldown. So it's not on the global poison cooldown like your life bane and your weapon skill debuff are. That's on a completely separate one. So you can put this up whenever you want at any time. Of course, it has a 45 second self cooldown, but like if you just swap to disease, you can still put up your mez poison. And what this does is pretty simple it's a 500 unit PBAOE mez for 10 seconds. Uh, 45 second reuse. The interesting thing about this is it doesn't go away, um, so you can keep you can keep spamming it. 
So you see both of these dudes got Mez and they're, the effect's continuously going off. Also, one thing to note, you might notice you're not swinging your weapon. Well, I, I am, um, but I fumble my offhand every hit. And the reason my offhand fumbles is because if I'm fighting some dude and then I want to Mez him and then maybe run away or go for like a side stun or something, and we'll, we'll talk about those strategies later, if my offhand swings, it's going to break that mez because the mez is applied on my main hand swing. So it's applied before my offhand actually swings. So as soon as my offhand swings and if it hits them, then it's going to break the mez, even if it misses. But if it still swings, it's going to break that mez because the mez is applied on the main hand swing. So what I guess um, Broadsword did, which is smart, is made your offhand fumble every time you use mez poison. So it makes, it, it looks weird, so... Once my offhand swings, it's just going to, like, I'll, I'll just spam Garot. And as soon as my offhand hits, it's going to look like I'm not swinging. See, there you go. I just hit there, but I didn't, you didn't see the animation because I fumbled my offhand. So the cool thing about this Mez Poison thing is you can leave it up. And one, okay, the, the bad thing is you're not getting bonuses from other poisons. That's okay, though. What you are getting is a constant PBOE interrupts. Um, so it's spamming this Mez. Even if they're Mez immune, it still interrupts. Um, so that's really strong, um, especially if you're fighting a bunch of archers, like in a small group or a bunch of casters or healers or whatever, just something you want to lock down. This is a 500 unit interrupts off your, off your melee styles. So really strong there. Um, other, other strategies you can do with Mez Poison, um, you can well, run up, we'll hit him with a Mez Poison. He's Mez for 10 seconds and they'll go to the side. Pincer, whoops. Pincer, well, I just hit Pincer, but I fumbled. Pincer, there we go, and then Leaper. Keep in mind when you do fumble your offhand, it looks like you're not swinging at all. You still are landing the style. Um, it, it can be a little bit confusing, though. Um, or what we can do is mez a person, go around to the back, stunning stab him, and then go to the side, hit some Pincers. Oops, Pincer and Leaper. Now, this is interesting. So if you see here, I fumbled my weapon on Pincer, but it said I landed it. Um, and it said it already has that effect, I guess, for the Mez Poison, maybe. Um, hopefully not for the stun. But So I land my Pincer, but it won't let me follow up with Leaper. So it is a bit buggy there. Um, so that's something that Broadsword probably needs to address there. But yeah, it's it's not even stunning. So that's, that's a bit of an issue. But it's still landing the style, and I guess I'm still doing damage. Um, but anyway, so keep your Mez Poison on if you want to constantly interrupt in that radius. Really obnoxious. Um, another thing you can do with Mez Poison, hit him with Mez Poison. It lasts 10 seconds, so this is going to be hard. And I don't believe Mez Poison is affected by resist or dead or anything like that. And what you can do is restealth real quick within that 10 seconds and the PA. It's going to be difficult um, because they're going to come out right, right around the time you're stealthing. So it's going to be difficult to land, I think, but it's something you can do. What you can also do, oops, hit them with a uh, Mez Poison and then just run off and then restealth and then reset the fight. Or if you have first aid, you can hit a first aid. But I think the uh, Mez Poison into a stun's a pretty, a free side or back stun's pretty, pretty good. Now that's pretty much it for your Invenom. So we have all of your, your skills down. Um, let's look at some uh, just free skills, free abilities you get, Remedy being one of them. Um, what this does is it allow it, you lose 10% of your, your maximum hit points. So we'll hit it here. If I can find it. Where's my remedy for? So I didn't lose 10% hit points, but I guess I'm supposed to, unless I change that. Anyway, um, so I lose 10% of my hit points, and then I become completely immune to poisons for 60 seconds. Now, if I remember correctly, I can still be mez poisoned. I can still be snare poisoned. I can't be life baned, weapon skill debuffed, um, diseased, or um, melee debuffed. Uh, I think I can still be mez poisoned though. I'm pretty sure, uh, but don't quote me on that. But it's a, it's a really good anti and venom um, ability. So if you ever come across another nightshade shadow blade, just hit remedy on ink, and then you'll be you won't be affected by poisons. Now the issue is archers, um, rangers, scouts, and hunters also get remedy. So if they pop remedy, your poisons are, aren't going to be effective against them. So keep an eye out for that. Um, remedy also creates an issue when it comes to realm ability specking because Viper used to be a pretty good RA, um, but since a lot of the classes you're fighting now have remedy, 
your poisons are useless, so a, a remability like Viper, which I'll talk about in a second, aren't effective. Also, just in general, your poisons aren't effective. So a lot of people don't spec 50 in Venom for that reason. I like 50 in Venom, um, and I'll talk about specs in a second, but I can see why people go less than 15 Venom. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all your abilities I, I went over. Um, now what I'm going to do is talk about specs. Um, we'll look at my spec first, and then we'll talk about other um, variety of specs. Now, I like 50 stealth, and I, I think 50 stealth is very important just because your detection, your ability to stealth, and your movement speed are all very important. Also, the only time you get blur is at 50 stealth. There's no lower level version of blur. And I think bl blur is so good that it's it's definitely worth getting. And if you if you can't remember, blur is the ability that allows me to teleport to a, fr um, a friend or an enemy. So for example, I want to teleport to this friar, boom, on top of him. Cuts the space instantly, which is huge. Um, so that's why I think 50 stealth is pretty much a must. Um, sure, others might do something different, but I think it's definitely a must. Um, I go 40. I, I'm also rank seven, so I have plus 17 to my my skills if I have 11 in template. So I would go 34 slash or thrust because that gives me 51 composite. And then I like going uh, 45 to wield. I like the garrote chain, the garrote and death door chain. I think that's really cool. Um, I play infiltrator because I like crit strike. I don't want to use dual wield styles in it. It's kind of boring. Um, when I'm playing an assassin, I like crit strike stuff. So I want to I wanna use those. And I think there's a lot of cool crit strike styles. Um, lower dual wield, I, I have 19 dual wield, plus 17, of course. That's kind of an issue because you lose um, your ch chance to swing your offhand. Um, so your, your damage goes down a little bit overall because your average um, offhand swing is lower. Um, so that kind of sucks, but I like the unique factor of the crit strike. So I think it's worth it for me. Um, but a lot of people do go higher dual wield. I see why. And I also like 15 in Venom. Um, people might lower in Venom, but I think when you're fighting other visibles, um, it really helps. Things like vamps, savages, you know, heavy tanks. Those in Venoms can be crippling. Um, they may not be as effective against other stealthers because of Remedy. In fact, they might become completely useless for a fight. But, you know, it is what it is. Also, if you really want to, like I said, I'm pretty sure Mez Poison and Snare is a, you know, goes through Remedy. If you know someone's remedy, you can hit with the Mez Poison and kind of reset the fight. It's kind of a, uh, maybe a low thing to do. I don't, I don't know if that's the case. I think you do what you got to do to win. I don't think there's anything off limits, but you can always reset the fight by kiting or something and then coming back when remedy's down. And maybe you, you held on to your remedy, you didn't blow remedy, and then you have a remedy they don't. Um, it's kind of interesting tactic you can do um, to get around remedies. Or you might just lose the fight completely because they might stealth up and go somewhere else. Um, so yeah, that's why I went the spec. We'll, we'll, we'll um, pull up a different spec real quick. Let's see, where are we at, skills? What you can do is you can go 50 stealth, you can go 45 crit strike and 34 dual wield. And this is if you wanna, and also 34 slash. And this is if you drop your Envenom a bit. So what you lose here is you lose your 10 second mess poison and you get a lower level five second mess poison, which is probably, I don't know if this can resist actually. I, I'm not 100% sure if mess poison resists at all, but it might resist uh, being lower level. I'm not sure on that, don't quote me. I should probably uh, do some research there, but but you get a, your, your mess poison is reduced in half essentially at lower level. Also your snare poison is not nearly as good. It's only six seconds and a 35% slow versus nine seconds and a 60% slow. Still unbreakable, still goes through immunity, all that good stuff. Also, apparently it can't be purged. I didn't know that. It's really strong. Um, but yeah, so you lose your higher level snare. You lose your higher level um, weapon skill debuff. It goes down from 19% to 14%. Also, the con goes from 30 to 20. Not a huge deal, but there there is some noticeable loss there. Your disease drops pretty considerably. Um, you can actually, you can lower the dual wield a little bit and get the higher level disease. You actually lose all of your um, minus melee resist on that, unless you go 38 um, disease, for the 38 disease, and then you only have the 5% um, melee resist debuff versus 10% at the highest level. So that's that's okay, you know, that's that's not the hugest deal in the world. The big thing is you lose a, 
a big chunk out of your your life bane and you can lower your dual load a little bit more if you want and get the level 40 life bane it's all up to you and you can still have you know 35 dual load versus my 19 um and then you lose your uh you lose five or five percent on your melee debuff poison so that's a, a decent chunk that's a 25 percent loss there on that that poison and your your dot poison goes down pretty significantly but it is what it is but what that gets you is a higher dual wield chance so it's a big trade-off but if you find yourself fighting a lot of assassins and archers that rim you your poisons every time and you're like man these po this i'm i'm putting 50 you know i expect 50 poisons and i'm not getting any benefit from them this is an option and hell i guess if you want to you can go even lower poison than this uh, what you can also do is if you're not keen on dual wield or sorry not keen on crit strike maybe just go 21 crit strike get pa and then you can go 44 um, dual wield and then 50 poisons again. And then you're you're pretty good there. Um, what you can also do is you can go back to that 40 um, poison spec and get um, dual shadows, which is that frontal high damage, which is pretty hard hitting anytime bleed style. So this is a, a good way. You can also go 43, sorry. And then you can also increase this a little bit. So this is a pretty decent um, little spec right here. If you're fighting a lot of assassins and you don't value your poisons quite as much, 50 dual wield, 22 or 23 crit strike, um, 50 stealth, and then 40 player or uh, 40 ugh, 40 poisons. Now, if you're lower rank, you're gonna want to up your slash a little bit to get a 51 composite. So here you would drop your crit strike a bit and put a couple more points. You get 35 slash. You might can drop your venom a little bit, get a couple more points, or drop your dual wield down to 44 again get however many points you need in that. It's all up to you. Um, another spec would be, uh, let's see. Let's, let's pretend you're rank seven. All you need is 34. You can go for this spec. What does this get you? Nothing. Okay. So, all right, this is a good rank five spec. So at rank five, you get 51 composite with 36 slash. You have 40 poisons. Like I said, if you don't value your poisons as much because you're fighting a live remedy, you have 44 dual wield for that really nice evade chain, and you have 34 uh, crit strike for creeping death, which chains off a of, uh, PA, and that's your, your stun. And you also have 50 stealth. So there's a lot of options you can go. Um, like there's tons of customization in these infiltrator specs. Um, but to get back into game, we'll talk about some RA specs real quick, and then maybe some uh, template stuff. But as far as RAs go, and my RAs are all janky right now. They don't really, they're not real. Uh, Vanish one's nice. What that does is it instantly stealths you out of combat. So I can be attacking someone. Someone can be attacking me. Let's see, let's just hit. And then, oh crap, I'm gonna die or there's people coming to add. I hit Vanish and then it stealths me immediately. Now I'm disarmed for 30 seconds and silent. So I can't use seal abilities, seal spells or melee for 30 seconds, but it got me out of gel. Now, Vanish 1, it's a 15-minute reuse timer. And it also, let's see. Also, I get no big speed boost out of stealth. Whereas at Vanish 2, it doesn't show up on the delve, but I get a, a speed boost out of stealth. Or speed boost in stealth. So once I Vanish, I get a little speed boost so I can get away quicker. I don't know the percent on the speed boost. It might be just normal run speed um, at Vanish 2. But it gets me out of the danger zone. Um, a lot faster than just normal stealth speed. Um, Vanish 3, the reuse time is 10 minutes instead of 15, and the speed boost is higher. Speed boost is higher at Vanish 4, still a 10-minute reuse, and at Vanish 5, the speed boost is pretty pretty dang quick, uh, still a 10-minute reuse. So I'd get Vanish 1 or 2 maybe. I mean, if you really want Vanish 3 for the 10-minute reuse, go for it, but that's a lot of points invested in that for just something that gets you out of the fight. It's a good ability, but I don't know. I, I like, I'd rather put stuff into stuff or into abilities that help me kill things instead of get away but that's just me and not that there's anything wrong with vanish it's frustrating to fight against so we'll say um, another um, assassin only ra viper uh, this increases your your poison damage your dot poison damage by 40 percent which is pretty good i guess um i don't think it's really that it's not worth the points um viper 3 is 20 percent viper 5 is 40 percent it's just a 40 percent increase to your your damage it's not like it's doubling it or anything it's just a 40% increase for a lot of points, especially for something that a lot of what you're fighting is going to have a remedy against and going to be immune to. Not really worth it, in my opinion. 
maybe if you're like rank 11 or 12, you can probably throw it in there. But I think if you're a mid rank or low rank assassin, probably not worth it in my opinion. Other people might have different opinions. Perch, um, cures your stuns, mezzas, roots, whatever, dots poisons um, really good um, i'd get perch three to perch five whatever however high rank you are and whatever you know perch tolerance you have as far as cooldown goes um, perch three is a 10 minute cooldown instant purge perch four is a seven and a half minute cooldown perch five is a five minute cooldown um, perch two is a 15 minute instant purge perch one's kind of useless it's a five second delay on the purge and a 15 minute reuse empty mine's good if you're finding a lot of people legendaries or a lot of people that do magic damage Things like Maulers, Veilwalkers, um, uh, uh, I guess Friars if you're a, 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 another Realm Assassin. Um, all sorts of classes, really. Vamps um, if you're fighting Necros, melee Necros. Um, this increases your um, magic resist. I think it's your secondary magic resist by, I think, at level one, it's... We'll pull up the character planner again. At level one, where are we at? Empty mind, 10%, level two is 15%, level three is 20%, all the way up to 30%. Um, lasts for, what, 45 seconds, and it's a 10 minute reuse timer. So it's a pretty, it can be a pretty big um, resist buff. Other um, actives to get would be first aid. This is a really good one for stealthers. I'd probably get first aid one or two. Hell, maybe even three, but probably just stop at two. What this does is it's an out of combat heal. So you have to be out of combat for 10 seconds. That means you haven't been hit or done anything for 10 seconds. And once you're out of combat, um, it's a, you can fire it. And it's a 40% heal at first day two, 25% heal at first day one. Um, so it's just a nice instant heal up every three minutes. So the cool thing about this is you kite out, you hit first aid, and you can immediately re restart at the same time because your combat timer, being out of combat for 10 seconds also allows you to stealth. Um, cool things to do with this, hit him with the snare poison, kite out, 10 seconds later, hit first aid and stealth. Other things to do, hit him with a mez poison, run away, mez poison lasts for 10 seconds, unless they purge, hit first aid, re-stealth, re-engage, um, you know, run through sides, oops, Run through side snare or side stun, I should say, or, or back stun. You know, run off, hit first aid, stealth. Um, a lot of cool things. Banish and then first aid after 10 seconds. It's a, just an overall really good RA, in my opinion. Uh, what else do we have? So it for the actives. Um, as far as passives, you might want long one one just for sprint. You don't have to have it. I like a little bit of AOM. Um, just because I find myself fighting people with legendaries quite a bit. find myself fighting things like Maulers quite a bit now. Um, vamps are very popular. If I'm a Shadowblade or Nightshade, Necros are popular. Um, there's a lot of things that can do magic damage. This is just secondary passive magic resist. AOM5, it's a 10-point investment. Um, gives me 10% passive um, secondary magic resist, which is the same as Empty Mine 1, but it's up permanently. Whereas, but empty mine one costs five points. This costs 10 points to have it all up all the time. So it's a little bit of trade off there. Um, other passive RAs, uh, Master of Pain, really good. Just gives you a higher percent chance to crit. Um, things like Aug Strength, Aug Dex help. Um, if you're Thrust, get Aug Dex and Aug Strength. If you're just Slash, get just Aug Strength. Um, things like Mastery Majory are okay if you're really reliant on poison damage. Um, it's not a great trade off. I'd rather get Viper if you're going for that route. but if you're really trying to increase your poison damage, Master Majory might be a way to go, but I don't really suggest it. Like I said, a lot of things you fight have remedy. It's not going to be effective there. Um, Determination is good. Um, I have Debt 9 now because I was messing around in your group. But if you're grouping a lot, I guess, on your Inf and you're finding a lot of CC, like castable CC, uh, this just reduces the duration of CC on you. Um, but I wouldn't really recommend it for solo infiltrators. Um, things like toughness, increase your health. Pool, um, con also increases your health. Um, I think at a higher a higher rank of spec, I might have vanish three, might have you know purge five maybe, so I can fight a lot um, with purge up. Might have first stage one or first stage two to three. Um, drop my debt, obviously go a one five to seven maybe depends on how many legendary weapon people I'm fighting. Probably five. Get a bunch of Mastery Pain, maybe go for Mastery Pain 7 if I can get there, and maybe some Aug Strength since I'm Slash. Um, I don't know what rank that would put me at, but 
that might be a good RA spec. Obviously, take away the debt. Um, and that might be like rank uh, 10 or something, rank 11. I don't, I don't know. Things I would drop, vanish down to two maybe. Uh, maybe purge down to four. First aid, stay at two. Yeah, pretty much that. Maybe strength down a little bit. And you can you know start to fiddle with lower rank specs. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, as far as MLs go, I'm Battlemaster right now. The other option, Spymaster, which is built for assassins, but I think Spymaster's kind of been gutted um, with the way things have changed in the game. Um, yeah, it's just... It's not great anymore. Um, I don't even know if Essence Blade really works well anymore. I can't remember what they did to Essence Blades, but I think I think Essence Blade, which used to turn your weapons into Essence Damage, which used to be really strong because people don't have Essence Resist unless they have Resist of the Ancient. Um, but I, I can't remember what that got nerfed to. I don't even know if it does that anymore. Um, I'd have to go back and look. It's probably... Actually, I can probably pull that up. Sorry, give me one second. I'm logging in a different Infiltrator that's likely Spymaster. And I'll let you know exactly what the ML9 of Spymaster does. Consume Venom. Okay. Yeah. It's okay, I guess. Removes any active damage over time effects on yourself, but does not provide immunity. So this this is good against, I guess, if you get hit by Life Bane and you didn't have Remedy up, this purges the Remedy, essentially. If you get hit by, like, a Warlock dot, um, like a Witchcraft Warlock dot, and he's dotting you down, um, this would be a good way to get rid of Doom and all that good stuff. Um other than that, all you really get is Poison Spike. And like you get group stealth, but I don't really, that's not my deal, I guess. Uh, the only like thing I would like would be um, Poison Spike. So that's all I lack, which is just a poison node you put on the ground. It does damage in the area, the procs of poison on everyone, which is nice. But I find Battlemaster way better because one, throw a weapon so cool. What I can do, for example, put my Mez Poison up, throw a weapon, and I have an AoE Mez like that I just essentially casted from range and I can kite or whatever, or I can catch up to someone with that, throw up an AOE Mesm, they're mess for 10 seconds, I'm disarmed for 10 seconds and I've caught up to them if someone's kiting from me. Same thing with snare, put up my snare poison, throw a weapon, I can kite now, they're snared, or I can catch up. Same thing with um, life bane, for example, you can throw a life bane on them, so I'm not fumbling. Great. Um, so that's a good little deal. You can throw a weapon with poisons. Other things are the buff shears, and these are cool because they shear, obviously. Um, the cool thing about these also, they interrupt in a 350 radius. They apply a dex quick debuff and a shear in a 350 radius, also interrupts. Same thing goes for power leak and endurance drain. One, the power leaks are really good against vamps and other high power cost um, characters, things like Valkyries, um, all sorts of things. The end taps, I guess, good against some things. High end use classes. Um, Essence Flame's really good because it gives you a chance to proc a, uh, was it 130, 137 Essence DD? Especially when you're dual wielding, that's really nice. Um, grapple's okay, I guess. If you get a, a Zerker that's vendored on you, you can grapple it out. Um, yeah, that's a lot of cool stuff. Um, now, the reason you can get away with going Battlemaster and using these styles is one, because of this Metherian. King, the king's, uh, the freezing king myth has a five percent or five in in regen. Um, now, if you played Paladin Shaman's Bards years ago, red endurance used to be in five. So this used to be red endurance. Now red endurance is in seven, but in the olden days, red end was in five. You get that in the Metherian now, which is really strong. You also get things like um, Omni regen or just strong droughts of invigoration. That's endurance four. So now I have plus nine endurance regen, which is huge. That's an insane amount of in regen. So I can you know hit these styles all day long. Add on top of that drought of tenacity, which is a twelve percent endurance reduction cost potion, and that's starting to really decrease my end cost while I have a ton of in regen. So I can I can you know use battle master styles pretty much all day long with that much in regen. Um, and this is me swinging without the drought of tenacity up, without my Enrigen pot up. I just have my Metherian on. And I can use almost almost two rounds of these styles, close to it, 
now think of you know almost double my energy there and then take away 12 percent in costs and i'm i can use those styles all day so that's really strong that's why i go uh battle master now let's see um template some some items you want in your template are first off let's look at see if i have my class click on me i don't use my class cloak in my template but you can if you want. It gives you a 20% evade boost for 20 seconds, so it's like or 15 seconds. So it's an in-combat charge you want to throw up. Um, a really nice defensive boost. So that's not bad, honestly. That's that's a good that's a good charge. The other proc is a 10-minute um, duration defensive proc. Um, it's essentially a nerf down version of Shades of Mist. It's a 160 value, 100% um, absorption additive proc. Um, so that's pretty good too. Um, stats are okay, I guess. Um, I use this cloak, Otherworldly Stalwart Cloak, because it has this offensive proc. And it's a 10-minute duration, but it gives me a 5% chance, which sounds low, but it's it's okay. A 5% chance to proc a 6-second fumble. And that's pretty huge, especially when you're fighting other melee classes. Like if you're fighting another assassin and you get you know two of these fumble procs off, that's 12 seconds of them not swinging at you, which is massive. Um, and you're dual wielding, so you have a double chance to proc this. So pretty good, pretty good charge. The other proc on this is a seven minute duration defensive proc, very similar to the SOM and the loyal clip charge. It's just a chance to proc 150, 100% absorb ablative. So pretty good there. Other things you want, um, maybe Medal of Honor, Ghostly Medal of Honor. It's a 7% um, heal over time, 7% every 5 seconds for 30 seconds. So it's a pretty big heal charge. It used to be 10% per every 5 seconds, but they nerfed it a little bit. Still good. Um, also, great utility. Easy to fit in a template. Um, I like to put in this Otherworldly Ring. Um, it has a 5% health and armor factor buff. Also like to put in the Dream Conqueror Bracelet. Has a group 5% health and armor factor buff. Stacks with the Otherworldly Ring. Also definitely want to put in a melee resist charge. I use Mighty Belt of Vigilante. You can use Otherworldly Belts. Um, you can use Dragon Rings or Bracers. You can use Adept Belt of the Vigilante. It has one too. Also have another melee charge down here. Um, it's from the Dragon Bracer. So my, my belt reuse timer is 12 and a half minutes, I think, or just 12 minutes. This is a 15 minute reuse timer on the uh, melee charge. So I usually have one up, um, even if I die relatively quickly into a run after just popping one. I can use this other one as a backup. I wish I had a secondary magic resist charge from like a dragon ring, but just couldn't really fit that in the template. Um, other things I put in, um, Curse of Blood Gloves, um, just a good heal proc. Also the use on it's a 25% heal, instant in combat, really strong, really like that. Um, definitely recommend putting that in. And then I have I have the whole entire Inf curse set. Now the reason I have this is I like the stats on the chess piece a lot. The proc on it's really good. It's a heal over time, 5% per every five second heal over time proc when it procs, and also a 230 flat heal as well. So really good procs. Um, also I like the stats on it. It's got 2% conversion. And I'll talk about conversion more in one second. It's got built-in health regen, mythical health regen, built-in mythical evade bonus, built-in mythical DPS. And also, if I use all three pieces, I get 5% extra melee damage for 15 seconds after I use PA on someone. That's okay. That's not like the biggest deal, but it's a nice little bonus. Um, and the set just so happened to fit relatively nicely in my template. Um, now, talking about conversion, I'm using one of the conversion harbinger gems. Um, it gives me 5% extra conversion. Um, so I have a total of 7% conversion in this template, which is really nice considering um, what conversion does is it takes away 7% of the damage you take after resist, after all your mitigation's done or whatever. Damage that you actually get inflicted upon, it takes 7% or 5%, however much conversion you have, off of that damage. So if I get hit for 100, it takes away 7 damage. I get hit for 93 now. So that's saving me 7% hit points, or 7 hit points. It also goes into heal my end and power, so it adds 7 endurance. Um, this is nice when you're spamming Battlemaster styles. really keeps that endurance up if you're getting hit. Also, when you think about it, that 7% extra health I have over, over my entire hit points. So if someone's able to kill me and say I have 2,700 hit points, which is what I have on realm buffs, if you look right here, what it's going to do is it's going to essentially give me 7% more um, of those. So another, you know, like 2,300 or something like that, 2,400, 20, whatever the math is. 
um, or sorry, 240, I should say, not 2300, but it's going to give me about, you know, an extra 230 hit points or so, which is nice. That's essentially giving me a free bracer or ring charge, but it's up all the time. And if I get heal procs and things like that, um, heal over time procs and my effective health goes up, so does that conversion extra hit point bonus. So conversion is really nice. Offhand, I use um, the DF weapon. I like the procs on it. They're pretty decent, good stats as well. Um, ABS debuff as well as an accuracy boost. I use all sorts of weapons. I use the DF main hand. I use the ancient longsword. I use fine steel longsword mainly for the um, attack speed debuff. It's a 40% attack speed debuff for a minute. Um, I use legendary weapons. Uh, I use Astral Blade Evolutions. This is where I'm finding things that like to kite a lot. Things like Rangers, Hunters, Veilwalkers, things like that that like to get space and nuke you. Um, if I can put a pet on them, it stops that from happening. I also use Golden Spear on my back. I'll make Javelins. And then what Javelins do is they are interrupts. So Javelin is a 1250 range, 250 radius um, DD charge. It does like a little bit of heat damage and has a heat debuff, I guess. But I just use them for interrupts. Very strong use as an interrupt. I can't show you, but I think everyone that can use Golden Spear should always have Javelins in their inventory. It's just a free interrupt. And they have like a 30 second reuse, so you can use them every 30 seconds. So it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Um, I use my crossbow since I, my seal abilities. I have the uh, the tank line, which has the uh, melee absorb, five percent extra melee absorb. That's nice. And then also have a, a really nice parry buff, seventeen percent parry buff. I like that. Um, I don't have any seal interrupts. I do have my crossbow though. So if I get rooted or something and I need to rupt something, I'll just pull out my crossbow and fire it away. That's how I interrupt from range. Okay, that's pretty much it for Infiltrator. I might have missed something. Sorry if I did. Um, let me know in the comments if I did. Uh, if you learned something, good. That's, uh, that's the purpose of these videos. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, put them in the comments. Um, and thanks again for watching, guys. Hope it helps. We'll see you guys later.